Good night. <laughs> Where are all those on Wednesday? Hallelujah. They better be back on Wednesday. Hallelujah. And if, and if you're a parent in here and you got a teenager, hey, get them to church. I'm telling you, it's the best thing that could ever happen. I'm telling you, church never hurts anybody. Y'all know that, right? There is no side effects from going to church except good side effects, okay? So, again, we, we, we need more church and less of the world, less of YouTube, less of Facebook, less of TikTok and all that. Not that I'm against all of it, okay? You can have fun on it. But how many of you know that sometimes that fun leads into an hour, two hours, three hours? It can, it can be addicting. Eh? And one more thing about uh, Dakota. You know, he plays for McDonough High School. They're, they're undefeated. Undefeated. And I can relate to that because I root for an undefeated team. The Bulldogs. Okay? So, I hang out with uh, uh, undefeated. We don't get defeated. I mean, we don't, we don't. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We're going to probably get beaten. No, I'm just kidding. I ain't going to say that. I don't know. No, come on. I didn't speak it. It was trying to. I said, we might get, and I stopped, okay? I ain't said it all the way. Come on. Don't be throwing no hate, man. Boy, you get people, you talk about that team, boy, they get upset, you know, uh, especially the Bulldogs. But uh, anyway, they're a great team. So um, anyway, let's pray, and then we're going to get into the Bible. I'm going to get people all up against me. I love all y'all's teams, okay? I love the Florida Gators. I love Florida State, okay? I, I love them, okay? I don't like Alabama at all. Sorry. <laughs> I, uh, they got rolled last night. Yeah, they did. <laughs> Ooh. Hey, man, give the guy on the fourth roll a hand. That was good. I mean, it was good. I mean, that was good. I mean, hey, even if that had been my team, that was good. I mean, that just it flowed right in it. Hallelujah. Uh, but no, really, Alabama, I don't even like to go through that state. I'm about to really get in the flesh here. If they had a bridge that could go, right when I get to the line, to go over Alabama, and it's not against the people of Alabama. There's great people in Alabama. It's the roads, man. Have you ever rode through Alabama? I'm thinking, do they ever pave a road, man? I mean, it's like crazy, you know? Anyway, let's get to the message here because uh, this is much better than football, okay? Hallelujah. Yeah, come on. Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah. We got this side fired up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, and first, I repent, Father, for bringing up football. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's just all about you, Jesus, and you have scored the greatest touchdown ever. You are undefeated. You are a hero, Father. We love you so much, Jesus, and we just thank you that during this message that your word will exalt Jesus Christ and will lift us up and build us up. We give you praise and glory and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Well, last week, I started talking about who? Y'all remember what we talked about last week? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you know, because he is a spirit that is holy. You know, every spirit is not holy, right? That's why God had to put holy in front of it, because there's a lot of spirits that ain't holy. Have you ever seen those, uh, those bars and those uh, drinking places that says uh, uh, spirits? It makes you wonder what kind of spirits are in there. <laughs> I know what kind of spirits is in there because I've been in some of them, okay? I've had a few drinks with some of them spirits. You know, and they'll serve you all kinds of drinks, man. That means keep them coming, okay? But we're going to be talking about a spirit that's holy, and we're going to be talking about a spirit that wants to be in your life. And remember last week when I, when I started talking about the Holy Spirit, I asked all of you guys to kind of put what you've been taught in the past just to go ahead and put it off to the side. And don't be thinking from a perspective of a certain pastor, a certain denomination, a certain teaching or something. To go ahead and put all that to the side and let's open up the Bible and let's see what the Bible has to say about it, okay? Because a lot of people that don't speak in tongues will actually tell you the reason why you shouldn't. And if I'm going to go learn how to ride a motorcycle, okay, I'm not going to go get somebody to teach me how to ride a motorcycle that has never rode a motorcycle. I mean, what did that oh, I know it didn't come out real clear, but you know what I'm saying, okay? <laughs> you got it, you got it, okay? So I, I'm going to go somewhere to where I can say, hey, have you ever rode a motorcycle? Yes, yes. I, I, matter of fact, I got certificates on my wall about how I ride motorcycles, and I want to teach you how to ride a motorcycle. I'm interested, okay? I ride with Kevin. You know, Kevin's been riding bikes for a long time. I enjoy riding with him, okay, because I know I'm going I'm to go and I'm going to come. He is a very safe driver, okay, and he takes great, he's good at what he does, and he's been doing it for, I wouldn't want to follow somebody that just started. Not wise, okay. My point in saying all of this is, the Bible has a lot to say about the Holy Spirit. 
okay? And I have been walking with the Holy Spirit for many, many years, okay? And I speak in tongues, okay? And that is the thing that usually trips a lot of people up. Is when you say that right there, people just cut you off automatically. Like, oh man, oh man, my denomination. Again, I want us to throw that out. I want you to think about your Savior, Jesus. If Jesus was to stand here right now and tell you personally that, hey, look, speaking in tongues is of me, okay? That's, that's of my kingdom. Would you argue with Jesus? Would you get upset about Jesus saying that? No, nobody in this room would. Okay, well, guess what? We got a Bible <laughs> that actually tells us about these things. Now, I'm not going to just talk about that today. I'm going to talk about some other gifts that the Holy Spirit has that will help your life out. He has nine gifts that are available to every believer to help us in life and to also help other people. But like I said last week, man, we don't really have churches and we don't have pastors and leaders that spend a lot of time speaking on the Holy Spirit. So therefore, there's no hunger for the Holy Spirit. So the title of my message today is being hungry for the Holy Spirit. Being hungry for Him. And I'm going to show you some things that I hope just lights a fire on the inside of us. Amen? I mean, we have somebody that, 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 that has been given to us that has come from God Almighty. Amen? But before we get started, I want to start in uh, Luke chapter 3. We read this last week. I want to read it again. Luke chapter 3, verse 15. It says, everyone was expecting the Messiah to come soon, and they were eager to know whether John might be the Messiah. John answered their question by saying, I baptize you with water, but someone is coming soon who is greater than I am, so much greater that I'm not even worthy to be his slave and untie the straps of his sandals. He will baptize you with what? And fire. So who's going to baptize us with this person called the Holy Spirit? Jesus is going to baptize us with this. Now, he's not going to personally do it. He's going to use men and women to pray with people, but he's doing the work, okay? He's going to be doing the work. The Holy Spirit is a gift from God to you, just like Jesus is a gift from God to me. See, Jesus was a gift to the body, to the world from the Father because he loved everybody so much and he didn't want to see everybody go to hell. He wants to see people go to heaven. So he sent Jesus to save everybody. Now Jesus comes and he does his assignment. Now Jesus goes to the Father. He's that tag team with God. He did his part. Now I want to give you the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is going to help us do our part. It's going to empower us to be a Christian and not be ashamed. It's going to empower us to trust God when the world is telling us to trust something else. It's going to empower us to say yes when others say no. It's going to empower us to be victorious in this world. Jesus had one thing that he wanted to give everyone and that was the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit knows everything and has all power to help you and me live like Jesus did, full of victory and power over the enemy. You know, if you really thought about it and somebody asked you, hey, look, would you like to meet somebody that knows everything about everything? What would you say? I'd be interested. You know, I mean, I would. I'd be like, hmm, my, you know, I mean, that's, that's an advantage to have somebody that knows everything about everything. Now, I'm not talking about somebody who thinks they knows everything about it. You can find them all day long, okay? They're everywhere. On every corner, you'll find somebody, you know, that, hey, they think they know everything. But I'm talking about you would actually be introduced to somebody that knows everything about everything. Man, that would be an amazing thing. Well, that's what we have the opportunity to do. That is the benefit of becoming a Christian, not just getting saved and not going to hell. Thank God for that. I don't want to go to hell, but I, you know what? I got to pay my bills. I got to kick the devil around because he's trying to come after me. I want to walk in victory on my job. I want to be able to stand up for Jesus. I want to be able to stand out. I want to do some things for God. Amen. I want to be able to witness, tell somebody about Jesus. I need Holy Spirit. I need what he has. Amen. If Jesus needed the Holy Spirit to be successful, come on, church. We need the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. And it's, it's not far away from us. The Holy Spirit knows everything about you, and he knows everything you should be doing in life. He also knows the future, and he desires to share that with you if you will allow him. You know, the, the Holy Spirit will let you do what you want to do. He'll let you run your own race. He'll let you make your own decisions. He'll let you do whatever you want to do. He'll let you do all that. But the minute you will humble yourself and say, Holy Spirit, will you show me how to do this? Holy Spirit, will you help me be this? You know, Holy Spirit, I want to be a good father. Will you help me be a good father? 
Holy Spirit, I want to be a good husband. Will you help me be a good husband? He will help you. Why? Because he knows how to do it. I mean, he knows everything about everything. And he knows how to help you get better at the things you're weaker at. So why would we say no to something like that? No way, man. We don't want to say no. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit will show us the future and lead us in the right path. You know, the Holy Spirit is such a good friend that when you start going down a road you shouldn't, he'll tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, Pam, don't need to go there. Let's don't do that. Now, Pam could be like me, and I could be like her and be like many other people. Uh, I, well, I, I'm gonna, I, like, I won't go ahead and do it anyway. <laughs> I, I, I feel like this is, I, it feels good. I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. And how many of y'all have done that, and you've been like, ooh, this ain't good? I mean, even before you even knew God, has there been anybody in the room that you've done something, and you went, I wish I wouldn't have done that? That's the loving Holy Spirit being there to try to you know, comfort you and help you during that time. Even when you was lost, unsaved, didn't even know God, hated God, didn't want nothing to do with God, He's still helping you and trying to help you get through life. Amen? The Holy Spirit also has wonderful gifts that He would like to share with us that will help us on our journey as well as help others on their... You know, these gifts that I'm about to read are not just for other people. How many of you know that the gift of discernment, of knowing what somebody's being driven by, good or evil, you might want to know that before you get in a business deal with them. Amen? I mean, wouldn't that be nice, Holy Spirit, show you? Amen? Well, they, these gifts, of, how about a, a word of knowledge? Wouldn't you like to have a little bit of extra knowledge to kind of stop you from going somewhere that you shouldn't go? Amen? Yeah, these are gifts for us as well. But if we never talk about them, and that's why I'm excited about this, because I don't know about you, I don't want to be a church that you just come in and you hear a good message and you go home. I want to come in and I want to see these nine gifts in operation. I want to see a moving of the Holy Spirit like, you know, we have ne- I've seen some moves of God. I have. I've seen some really good stuff. But I want to see in time revival move of God. Amen? That's why we're here. And I'm not going to just read about Jesus and the apostles and and others. I want to be doing it too. How about y'all? Amen? Be right there on the front lines. Glory to God. The Holy Spirit loves people and he wants all to know God and his love for them. So Paul tells us about these gifts in 1 Corinthians 12.1. Paul starts out in verse 1. He says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. I don't want you to be ignorant about these gifts. Why would he start out saying that to a church? It's because they were ignorant of these things. The Corinthian church was spiritual, but man, they were all over the place. They did all kinds of crazy stuff. So he he, he coming into this church, it's already jacked up a little bit. And he said, hey, look, I don't want you to be ignorant about these things because at some measure they were operating in some spiritual, but they had got off track a little bit. So Paul's about to bring everybody back to the middle here and say, look, this is what we're supposed to do. So let's drop down to verse 4, 1 Corinthians 12, 4. So he don't want you to be ignorant, and then he's about to tell us about these these gifts the Holy Spirit has for us. It says in verse 4, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministry, but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of how many? Of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, but one and the same Spirit works all things, all these things, distributing to each one individually as who wills? He wills. As the Holy Spirit wills. You know, and I've heard this said a lot, okay, that, you know, oh, man, I have the uh, gift of healing. You know, I, I, that's, that's my primary gift. I work in the gift of healing. No, 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 no. You may have seen some gifts of healing in your ministry or in your life. But you are not the one that possesses the gift. The Holy Spirit possesses the gift. You were just the one he used at that time. When you start claiming something that don't belong to you, that's a good way not to be able to work in it no more. It belongs to the Holy Spirit. And to be honest with you, all of them are amazing. Why would I just pick one out? I want them all working through me. Amen? I don't want to be just single-minded. I want to be nine. (laughs) Come on, man. How many of y'all would like to see a working of a miracle? I mean, you go over there and you see somebody that, that, that really is, is down and out, like our brother, you know, Scott's uh, dad, in Jesus' name. I want to see a miracle. 
I want to see Scott's dad touched by the power of God. I believe he's going to be touched by the power of God. I believe he's being touched right now by the power of God. I want to see miracles. Why? Because miracles change people's lives. It makes their life better. Amen. And it establishes God's work on the earth. Who does that make look good when a miracle happens? God. The God you serve. Amen. And man, that's why we want these things. We don't want to just be quiet Christians. Oh, yeah, man, I go to church, man. I go to church. It's cool, man. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. No, I want to be a Christian with some power, man. Then when you walk in rooms, there's something else walking in the room. It's called the Holy Spirit because I value Him. I'm not ashamed of Him. I'm not embarrassed of Him. No, Holy Spirit is with me wherever I go. He helps me do whatever I do. I talk to the Holy Spirit going down the road. The Holy Spirit comes into my truck and just spends time with me. People can, I, I'm looking at people all the time, and they're talking like crazy, too, okay? A lot of them are like doing like this, like this, and they're just talking. You know, hey, look, talk to the Holy Spirit, amen? Hallelujah, glory to God. Well, let's drop down in the same chapter. We're going to get into some more things here, but 1 Corinthians 12, 27. He says, now you are the body of Christ and members individually. I love that right there because everybody in this room has the opportunity to have a close relationship with Jesus Christ. Your walk with Christ has no bearing on my walk with Christ. It can be greater or it can be less than. We all have the opportunity. And that opportunity is going to be challenged as soon as I say, Amen, have a good week. What are you going to do when you leave here? Are you just going to go back to life as normal? You're going to go back to this temporary world that's fading away and invest all your time and energy. I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. Oh, I got to go, I got to go, I got to go. Chasing stuff that is like going to just dissolve very soon. Like the vapor coming out of a pot of water. It just goes up and it moves. It's just gone. It's gone. No, man, I got I to gotta get it. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. Running and running and running. For what? For what? If we took that same hunger we have to try to do things in the world, to try to do things for God, where would our lives be personally and where would the people around our lives be? Just, just food for thought, okay? Members individually. Verse 28. And God has appointed these in the church, first apostles. Notice he appointed them in the what? Church. Not in the living room of somebody's home, okay? Not in the Starbucks cafe. We're going to meet there and have church. You know, not in the playground. No, no, no. In the church, okay? In the church. He, he appointed these right here, all right? He said, first apostles. Second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? Let me help y'all. No. <laughs> no. Okay? Do all have the gifts of healing? No. Do all speak with tongues? No. Do all inter- I'm going to come back to that, okay? Do all interpret? No. But earnestly desire the best gifts, and yet I show you a more excellent way. He said in verse 31, but earnestly desire the best gifts. What is he talking about? He's talking about the gifts of the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge. Desire the gifts of a prophet. Desire the gifts of an apostle. Desire these things because they're from God. Now, a lot of people, especially those that will preach against tongues, will will take this particular passage right here. It says, do all speak with tongues? And they say, see there, brother? We're telling you, man, not everybody speaks in tongues. We, we don't, every, all of us speak in tongues. Well, Mr. Preacher, if you'll read the whole chapter, okay, read the whole chapter, 12, read the whole chapter. Paul was saying in, in the top of the chapter that there is a gift called tongues and interpretation of tongues. That's what Paul's referring to. Because if you go to 1 Corinthians 14, Paul says, I thank my God I speak in tongues more than you all. So is, 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 are we having a conflict of scriptures? I mean, no. you got to read things in context. That's why you should never take one scripture out of the Bible and just teach on it. Take the whole context of the, 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 what Paul's saying. He's talking about does all have the ability to prophesy in a tongue, and does everybody have an ability to interpret what somebody said? Has anybody in here ever been in a service where somebody spoke in tongues and then somebody gave the interpretation? Raise your hand. Okay. All right. I think that's so cool. <laughs> I was at a revival, Kenneth uh, Hagen, uh, and I'm going to read something from him just now. I was at a, a Kenneth Hagen camp meeting one time. And Kenneth Hagen, uh, which he had a very 
good ministry. He had no flaws in his ministry. There was no scandals in his ministry. He, he lived and walked and did what God called him to do, and he did it without any schemes, scams, or whatever, okay? But I remember one day, I mean, the Spirit of God was moving in the service. And again, I'm, I'm an old drug-drinking, partying guy. So I like this stuff. I've seen this in the world. I mean, I went to parties, and man, they drinking, and woo! Yeah, man, what's up, man? I mean, they're acting crazy. Don't nobody say a word about that. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, that guy, man, look at him, man. He's crazy, you know? Nobody says nothing. You start doing that in the church, everybody like, whoa, man, that's crazy. I wasn't that guy, okay? Because I didn't have all that religious teaching. I had just, you know, hey, look, this is good. I like this. You know what I'm saying? I'm not drunk. I'm not high. But, man, we're having a good time in here. We're acting crazy, okay? But anyway, uh, Kenneth Hagin was on stage, and, man, he got into a conversation with somebody in tongues. I mean, they're just going back and forth. And I'm just going, man, wow. Now, this is interesting. I like this. And then they started interpreting what they were saying. And, see, to your natural mind, you go, that's silly. That's stupid, okay? Watch out what you're calling stupid. Just because you don't understand it, my friend, don't mean that it's stupid or it's not right. We are not the judge of spiritual things. The Holy Spirit and God is. Amen? But that's just one, one, one gift. But that's what Paul was talking about. He wasn't talking about you being filled with the Holy Spirit and having your own private language. Now, I'll say this, because i got to make this clear too, that if I was to come up here right now and I start speaking in tongues, Okay, I just start speaking in tongues. And I don't give no interpretation. Is that okay? Uh-uh. No, that's not okay. Because there is no understanding of what I said. That's not right. That's not adding any value to the people out here. All right? And if anything, it's going to cause, and you read this in the Bible, it will cause like if an unbeliever comes in here and somebody is doing that with no interpretation, that person's going to say, and I've got a translation, I think it's the NLT, that says they are out of their mind. What's wrong with them? They're out of their mind. Has anybody been to a church service and you've, you've heard some of that stuff and you leave and go, whoo, man. I remember the first Pentecostal church I went to. Lord Jesus, hallelujah. I mean, they praised and worshiped God for at least two hours. I mean, the guy started in a beautiful suit. Next thing I know, it's un I mean, jacket's gone, sweat's flying, and I've got a lady off beside me screaming in tongues, and I'm going, whoa hallelujah man this is interesting amen uh and, and it was just and no interpretation so i mean what did i leave i left going man that, that woman's out of her mind okay so we don't want that neither so even on this platform you're not going to see me come up here and just pray in tongues okay and not give an interpretation and i don't want anybody else on this platform doing that period okay if you got an interpretation, that's cool. Amen. Now, when we meet at prayer, hey, man, we're going to pray in tongues. I'm just going to be honest with you. <laughs> we pray. So, you know, just, you just know that. But, I mean, that's, it's different when we're in a corporate setting like this right here. But anyway, let's go to 1 Corinthians 14, 1, which this is a whole chapter later. Listen to the language that we just read in verse 31 of chapter 12 when it said, but earnestly desire the best gifts. Paul says this after they, you know, y'all know what chapter 13 is, right? The love chapter. So he takes a pause and he starts talking about love because there is no greater than love, okay? We need love. But he says in 14.1, he says, Let love be your highest goal, but you should also desire the special abilities the Spirit gives, especially the ability to prophesy. We should be desiring these things, y'all, desiring a move of God. This is what's going to change you and your family. How many of you moms and dads that you want to have insight when it comes to your kids? Okay? The Holy Spirit can give you and has. There's been many parents that you had, whoa, 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 picking up something right here. And next thing you know, you're seeing something that they didn't think you was going to see. And now it's like, oh, now we see, okay? And sometimes you'll catch things before. That's the, the Holy, that's a gift that the Holy Spirit will work through you for your benefit. What if you're about to go apply for a job? And they're promising you a nice 401k and a benefits and, oh, vacation package, big time money. But all the while, there's demons sitting at the break room waiting for you. They're just smiling. Yeah, get that job, bro. We got you, man. But the package looks good. Wouldn't you like to tap into that discerning of, of spirits and him show you, whoa, I see that. I don't want to go there. And you're able to walk away from it. 
This, when we desire these things, when we earnestly seek after these things, these are the things we can expect to happen in our life. But if we're just flipping it about it, nah, man, you know what, I mean, give me something else, man. I don't really understand all that. I want something else. No, you need to understand this right here, okay? You need to get this right here because this can help you, amen? And it can help other people in your life. Hallelujah. Are these gifts important? Very important. Very important. Should we know about them? Should they be in our church services and in our everyday life? Next question, how hungry are you for the Holy Spirit? Let me ask you something, guys. If you go two or three days without food, do you start getting hungry? If y'all miss lunch, y'all probably don't start getting hungry. There's something on the inside of you going to be telling you you need to eat. And the longer you go without food, the more hungrier you become naturally. Well, that same hunger you have for natural food is the hunger we want to develop for spiritual things. Okay? And, and, and just because you can't put salt and pepper on, on the Bible and eat it, it, it don't mean that we've got to be diligent to get in the Word of God and get it in us to where we can be a, get hungry for And the more you spend time with this book, y'all, I'm telling you, the more you're going to want to spend time with this book. You really will. Because this is, it handles all the issues of life, and it will get you where you need to go all the time. When you spend, what you spend the most time with, with will determine what your desire is for. Like for me, I remember a long time ago, I, I, I was thinking about a Yorkie. Went to Pensacola and went to the pet stores. I don't even know if they still got those pet stores in the malls and stuff, but I was in the pet store, and guess what I saw in the window? A Yorkie. Oh, it was a black and tan one, and I'm thinking, mm, gosh, it was so beautiful. It was a little big toy one, you know, small ones. I'm thinking, man. So what happened? I'm starting to think about this Yorkie. So I come home. And back then, you could look for animals in the AJC. So I pulled out the AJC and found a Yorkie. I thought, hmm, not far. Just right down the road. Hey, baby, let's go see the Yorkie. So I go, and I, I look at this little beautiful Yorkie, but he wasn't black and tan. He was gray and silver, okay, because Yorkies were kind of coming, sometimes a mixture of all that. I saw him, man. He was so, but he was, he was, uh, was going to be about, I think, $500, and that wasn't sitting well with my mama here, okay? She wasn't happy about that. But I said, baby, look, we're good. We can do that. So we went to the bank, and I got the money and went back and got the dog. Well, we got that dog, and she said, well, we might as well get a female. So there was, we found a female, so we went and bought another one for $600, okay? But it, it was the fact that I started looking at it and looking at it, and, and the desire got stronger and stronger. So now I've got two Yorkies, okay? Thousands of dollars later, I go from carpet house to hardwood floor house because it was nothing but a big potty pad, okay? I mean, I'm just being real with you, okay? It was like pee central, all right? And once they pee one time in your house, let me tell you something, they're going to pee again and again and again and again. Just move, okay? Just leave, okay? You're going to have to go home to the house. Like, no, man, I got hardwood floors. I got tile. <laughs> oh, man, ain't you? Well, you... <laughs> hey, man, no, no. Them dogs can smell stuff like you ain't kidding. No, I cleaned it up real good. Okay, all right. Wait till you step into it again, okay? Motorcycles. It was a thought. It was a thought. Then it become sign up for a class at... Harley Davidson, the next thing you know, boom, I got it, okay? It became a desire. I was, I was spending time with it. Sports is the same way, amen? Uh, but the same thing can happen with the Bible and the Holy Spirit. It can happen the same way too. Hunger is what is needed in the body of Christ for the things of the Spirit. So what we're going to do right here, I'm going to put this down here, is we're going to watch a short clip of a move of God in Africa. Okay, not a move of God 10 years ago, a move of God last year, okay? And I want you just to listen to what, what really is going on. I want you to watch the whole video. It's only about two or three minutes, but just, just watch this, and then we'll, we'll come back. People of Kumasi, are you happy tonight? This week is going to be a week of miracles. This is a week of salvation. This is a week of blessing. This week, curses will be broken. This week, you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. And you will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Do you know who has healed you? I know that Jesus has healed me. Can I have your stick? 
In Jesus' name, no more stick. She wasn't able to talk to you before. Yes. Sweetheart, say Jesus. Jesus. Oh. His left ear was deaf, but his right ear was fine. Okay, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you meet Jesus, you cannot walk the way you used to walk. When you meet Jesus, you cannot talk the way you used to talk. When you meet Jesus, you cannot live the way you used to live. Your life has to change. Say amen. So you, you could not even wear those shoes yet. And you can see the difference. Move around. Let's see. Move down. Move your head. Move your back. Is there any pain? It's gone. Hallelujah. I greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit will come down here and fall upon you, and you will never be the same again. When you surrender your life to Jesus, his blood will mark you. And from this day forward, the devil will never dare to touch you, because if he touches you, he will burn his filthy fingers. How are you feeling right now? Right now, I can <laughs> do something that you couldn't do before. Now run, 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 run. Come on, come on, come on. No pain. No pain. Hallelujah. That pain was so severe. Let's dance for his glory. Come on, let's dance for his glory. Jesus told his disciples, I am the light of the world. But before he left, he said, now you are the light of the world. The light shines, the darkness flees, and I want you to get ready to receive the light of the Holy Spirit right now. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power. I bless you in Jesus' name. I bless you, I bless you, I bless you. If you receive it, shout a mighty, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wanted to pull that up because that is actually going on right now, okay, all over Africa. Okay, Nigeria has the largest churches in the world, not America, okay? The largest churches in the world are in Africa right now, okay? They're having, and it's not just Africa, it's other places too. But what you need to realize, did you see the rain that was pouring down while he was actually talking in the short clip there, Okay. Those people walk for miles to get to these meetings. Miles. They come with everything they got. And they're coming to these. Why? They're hungry for God. Hungry for God. I believe that same hunger is going to be released and is being released in America. But we're going to have to because we do have a lot more things that pull at us. A lot more things that get our attention, okay? We're going to have to fight a lot harder, I believe, in some areas of life to say, God, we want you more than we want anything else in this world, okay? These people here, and I'm going to read a little bit about this. This happened in November 2022. For three weeks before the Christ for All Nations flagship crusade in Gumasi, Ghana began, over 120 Christ for All Nations evangelism boot camp students had already been there hard at work spreading the gospel through kids' crusades in the marketplaces and on Christ for All Nations gospel trucks. Multitudes had already been ministered to and healed, seeing 340,174 documented decisions for Christ before it ever started, okay? Okay. Uh, and that was before the crusade had ever started. The first night of the flagship crusade saw over 100,000 people in attendance. As evangelist Daniel Kalita preached a clear gospel message. And as the word spread, the crowd more than doubled by the final night. For four days, the people of Gumasi were blessed with a mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Miraculous healings poured forth and tens of thousands surrendered their lives to Jesus. Ghana truly is being saved. Now, one thing you need to keep in mind 
is Christ for All Nations was started by a man named Reinhard Bunke. I would really encourage you, pull up some of his. He was a German Pentecostal preacher that he was called to take the message to Africa. He saw in a vision all of Africa being covered by the blood of Jesus. And the one thing that I heard him say, it, it stood out to me, is that when he got that vision from the Lord, at the same time there was another man in Africa that was actually tearing it up but he actually pulled back and just said he's going to pastor. He wasn't going to do crusades no more. Now, Reinhard Bunke didn't find this out until years later because he found himself in a city where that, that guy was at. So he wanted to go see the guy. Well, when he went and seen the guy, the guy wasn't there, but somebody there worked for him was there. And the guy told him, he said, no, he used to do those. He don't do them no more. He pastors. And, and, and Reinhard Bunke said, when did he do that? And it was the same day that God spoke to him to go to Africa and see Africa get saved. And what he said, he, he said, look, if you're not careful, God will use somebody else to do what you were called to do. And I'm looking at a room full of people in here that you've been called to do something for God. If you think it's not going to happen, you're mistaken. God's will is going to happen. But the question is, is it going to happen with you and me? And if we say no to one of the greatest gifts that God could give us in the Holy Spirit... How are we going to be able to walk out God's, all, all, all what God's called us to do? I mean, seriously, why would Jesus give us the Holy Spirit, y'all? Why? I mean, if we could do it without the Holy Spirit, why even bring it up? Why even have this, this in the Bible? Well, we could do it on our own, man. I got Jesus. I'm good, right? No, we was going to need something other. We're going to need some help to get through this. Jesus is the door to heaven. The Holy Spirit is the power from heaven to help you live a Christian life. Amen. They're both important. They're both extremely important. And, and, the, and the, the, the most important thing you could do is receive Jesus, okay? Obviously, because I want to see you in heaven, okay? And, and receiving the Holy Spirit is not a heaven or hell issue. It is a gift. When somebody brings you a gift, you can either receive it or reject it, okay? That don't mean they, you stop being friends with the person, okay? It's just something that you just don't want. This is a picture, what we just saw, of what I believe is going to happen in America. Hunger for God, hunger for the Holy Spirit. These people are so hungry, they would walk for miles and stand in the rain just to hear about Jesus and receive what the Holy Spirit had for them. Miracles, signs, and wonders followed this hunger. Reinhardt Bunke, in his meetings, they would have millions of people in, in the meetings. I'm talking about millions. It was like a sea of people that you couldn't even see. It was so far. And they would literally bring dead bodies because they live in villages. They live out in the rural. I mean, they, 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 it don't matter there. You know, They would bring dead bodies to his meeting, and they would be healed by the power of God. This is what I'm talking about, y'all. That hunger and desire. God is not going to give people something that they ain't hungry for. It ain't going to happen. And if you treat ca uh, Christianity as casual, then God will treat you as casual. You'll only get a little bit. I want a lot. How about y'all? I want to be a part of a church that people do look at the church as the first resort instead of their last resort. They look to come to church to get answers to their problems instead of looking to other people to get, going to psychic hotlines, going to people outside, spiritualists, all these people to try to get answers. No, they come to the house of the Lord to get an answer. Why? Because the answer's here. Amen? And we will get that being filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. What about you? What about me? How hungry are we for God? How hungry are we for the Holy Spirit? Jesus told the apostles to not even start having meetings until they received the gift from the Father. And that was the Holy Spirit. They was not even allowed to go out and have a crusade until they got filled with the Holy Spirit. That's how important this is. Amen? This is not something. I mean, this started the whole New Testament church is being filled with the Holy Spirit. It is so vital. And God wants us to have it. Receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit in your life puts you in position to receive gifts from the Holy Spirit. These are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit that can be used by people that he chooses to give them to. These gifts will cause people to be amazed because when they are on display, no one can explain it because it is God working through a person to do something supernatural. The Holy Spirit has gifts to share with us to help us kick the devil out of our life and the lives of others when the devil comes and messes with us. So let's, let me just read some of these. I'm going to read over these gifts real quick. All right. There's nine gifts that Paul talked about. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the discerning of spirits. They, these are under the category of a mind, mind gifts. 
The gifts of power are the gift of faith, the working of miracles, and the gifts of healings. Vocal gifts are prophecy, divers uh, kinds of tongues, and interpretations of tongues. Are these gifts important? Yes. Everything in the Word of God is vitally important for us and the world. We need to understand how our friend, the Holy Spirit, operates. And you may be sitting here and you may be saying, you know what, Pastor? Look, I got a lot of things in life, man. You know, I mean, this is cool and everything, but man, I've got some relationship problems. I got some business problems. I got some, you know, just personal problems, emotional problems. I got some things I'm going through right now, man. Couldn't we be talking about something to help me do that? I am talking about something that can help you. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit that can help you. Amen. I'm talking about he's greater than any Superman or Marvel hero or anybody in your life. The Holy Spirit can give you what you need when you need it. Amen. So I'm introducing you to a friend that wants to be with you all the time. Amen. And help you in every situation in life. And he's got so much to offer. I don't, I don't have anybody that has these kind of gifts, y'all. I don't have anybody. Now, I can go watch a movie and just dream about what it'd be like to fly over a building or throw cobwebs out and do this or stop, you know, something. I mean, but that's all fake ma- fairy tale stuff. Amen? So, hallelujah. So, let's look at these gifts individually real quick. The gift of the word of wisdom. Word of wisdom. This is a supernatural revelation or insight into the divine will and purpose, showing how to solve any problem that may arise. This gift will show you the future. This is a word of wisdom. This is beyond your understanding. It's way beyond you. He actually comes and he shows you something way in advance to where you will make the right decision when you do it. Hallelujah. In Acts 27, verse 21 in the New Living Translation, Acts 27, 21 in the New Living Translation, you're going to see this gift of word of wisdom in operation. No one had eaten for a long time. Finally, Paul called the crew together. This was a ship that was being beat out there on the ocean. And Paul told them, look, man, we shouldn't do this. But they went ahead and did it anyway. He said, men, you should have listened to me in the first place and not left Crete. You would have avoided all this damage and loss. But take courage. None of you will lose your lives, even though the ship will be go, go down. For last night, an angel of, of, of the Lord, or God, to whom I belong and whom I serve, stood beside me. And he said, don't be afraid, Paul, for you will surely stand trial before Caesar. What's more, God in his goodness has granted safety for everyone sailing with you. So take courage, for I believe God, it will be just as he said. That was a word of wisdom that he was able to pass on to all of those people that thought they were going to die. Okay? He was able to give them that comfort to where they would be able to rest a little bit. I don't know. I still don't know how you rest when you get your boat out there flying all over the place. But hey, I guess it had a, a better word than saying, hey, we're all going to die. <laughs> I mean, you know. Uh, then the gift of word of knowledge. The word of knowledge is the supernatural revelation of divine knowledge or insight in the mind, will, or plan of God. God is all knowing. He knows everything. But he doesn't reveal everything he knows to man. He just gives him part of what he knows. We can't handle all his knowledge. Can't handle it. He's truly a know-it-all. But how many of you know that we need to tap into his knowledge? And see, if you value the Holy Spirit, then you're going to actually put yourself in a position to have these gifts manifested in your life. If you don't value the person of the Holy Spirit, I mean, it'd be like you, you know, me and you friends, but you don't value me as a friend. You don't really care, you know, really that much about me. You don't hate me. You do not, not like me. You just ain't really interested in being around me. But I've got so much to offer you. I've got a lot I can actually help you with. But you really don't spend no time with me. Am I really going to run over there and give you all of what I have if you don't show me no interest? No, No, it's not going to happen. From a natural perspective, it's not going to happen. Well, from a spiritual, because he is a perfect gentleman, y'all. Now, he does probably cross the line more than we know because he loves us so much. Okay? And he's like, ooh, Tina. Uh, Right? Don't go to that Dollar General. Over there. Over there. Over there. I'm just saying He loves us so much, he's going to try to help us. Amen? Amen. The next one is um, the gift of discerning of spirits. This is a supernatural revelation or insight into the realm of the spirits to detect them and their plan and to read the mind of men. And this kind of sounds far out, okay? Because when you think about, you know, the spirit realm and the natural realm, we've been taught just to think about the natural realm all the time. We live in a world that focuses way much more time on the natural. They don't talk about it. I mean, we hear it now, people talking about UFOs and aliens. Or there's a ghost in that house. Have you ever heard that? There's a ghost in that house. Okay? All of that is bogus, baloney, stupid. 
That is men trying to come up with a definition of the spirit world. Okay? There is only spirits and there's only humans. That's it. Okay? Angels are spirits of God. Okay? Demons and devils are spirits from the enemy. That's all there is. Okay? So, so once we get that insight, this spirit of discernment, God opens up your mind to be able to see into the spirit realm. Okay, let me give you an example. Do y'all remember when, uh, I think it was Elijah or Elisha? And remember, he went out and he looked and he had a servant right there and he said, Hey, bro, we good. We good. We got a lot of people that's with us right now. We got a lot of people that's with us. And remember, Elijah's servant went, What's he talking about? <laughs> he ain't seeing nobody. All he's seeing is a big old military that's about to wipe him and, and Elijah out, okay? He said, man, I, I don't know what he's talking about. And then, then Elijah said, Lord, open up his eyes that he can see. And then the Lord opened up his eyes and he said, oh, okay, we good. We all right. That's the spirit of discernment. That's when he opens up your, opens up your eyes to see beyond the natural. And how many of you know this is pretty cool? This is very important that we be able to tap into this. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Holy Spirit will show you what spirit is working in someone, good or bad. Hallelujah. You ever had a bad feeling about somebody? Mm, I don't know about them. Yeah, that's the Holy Spirit, okay? <laughs> don't ignore that, all right? But he'll show you the bad things about coworkers, employees, friends. This gift can help you dodge a lot of problems when dealing with people and businesses. The gift of discerning of spirits can help you and others, all right? Now, the gifts of power. Now, these are the most popular, okay? These are the ones that cause people, you know, uh, to, to, to go to these movies and see these Marvel superhero movies. Why? Because there's power involved. There's supernatural power, something you just don't see at school. You know, you don't see little kids flying across the room, picking up chairs, throwing them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, yeah, you might see that. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure that could happen. Hallelujah. But anyway, the gift of faith, this is the, the gift of faith is the supernatural ability to believe God without human doubt, unbelief, and reason. This is, man, you come across something, and I mean, man, you believe God. I mean, God dumps his faith on you, and you can believe God for something just like that. I've heard ministers talk about they'll be actually praying for people, and the gift of faith would hit them, and they would just run down the line touching people because it's just like, man, and it's like a, it's like a superpower that just comes over you, and you just go as long as you can, and, and, and you see miraculous things happen. That's God's faith at work in a human being. It's above our faith. Gift of healing. This is a supernatural power to heal all manner of sickness without human aid or medicine. This is about you praying for somebody and this gift being manifested and you see something that just blows your mind. Amen? And this is a gift of healing. The working of miracles. This is a supernatural power to intervene in the ordinary course of nature and to counter-react uh, natural laws if necessary. The working of miracles. How many of y'all would like to have that going on in your life? Amen. The thunderous excitement going through the crowd right now. All right, preacher, I'm tired, man. Could you just, <laughs> hallelujah. I do. I believe all these things are going to be working in all of y'all. Hallelujah. Vocal gifts. Gift of prophecy. This is uh, supernatural speaking to a person or a group of people to bring edification, exhortation, and comfort. This is something that the body of Christ we should be known for around here at Revolution Church. When people come in, we should be able to prophesy to people. Man, you're a blessing. You're awesome. Man, God, you're a gift from God. Boy, we're so glad to see you. Welcome home, man. This is a place you, God's going to touch you and change your life, right? That's prophesying, okay? Now, the prophet has a different office he stands in. He'll prophesy things about things in the future and stuff, okay? That's the office of a prophet. But prophecy is something that we all can operate in. And then the last two is diverse kinds of tongues. And this is supernatural speaking in other languages not known by the speaker. And then interpretation of tongues, this is simply supernatural ability to interpret in the native tongue that was spoken in the other languages not known by the one who interprets by the Holy Spirit. I've heard a pastor say that he was one time speaking in, uh, in uh, Mexico, and uh, he didn't know Spanish, but he was speaking to Spanish people. Well, he had a Spanish interpreter, but the Spanish interpreter didn't show up. So he just said, Holy Spirit, it's Mark Rutland. I don't know if you've ever heard of Dr. Mark Rutland, uh, but he actually just got up there and started praying in the Spirit. All the while, he was speaking the message through the Spirit, and they were all getting touched by God. 
That's what I'm saying. When things are done in order, and if you read 1 Corinthians uh, you know, 12, 13, and 14, you're going to see, especially 14, God is a God of order. God is not a God of confusion. Okay, that's not what he does. And sometimes church services can get way out of hand and you can get too much flesh involved with the spirit. And because people may be a little immature, they can't discern what's going on. They just let it go and go, oh, it must be God. But everybody's scratching their head. I've been to those churches. I mean, I've seen people crawl up the walls like a, a, a snake. That's confusion, okay? That's, that's different, all right? People just squirming on the floor doing this kind of stuff. Again, knock yourself out, bro, but do that at home. I bet you don't do that at Walmart when you're shopping. Oh, the Spirit's on me. Let me just wallow on the floor. Really? I'm just saying there is acts that do bring confusion to people. God is not the author of confusion. But the enemy would love to come in and take these gifts all right, and cause confusion amongst the body. Because, again, we never learn how to operate in these gifts if we don't step out by faith. So there's going to be times you step out to be used of the Holy Spirit, and it may be an uh-oh moment. That's okay. Just go, all right, <laughs> forgive me, Lord. <laughs> be real. And I can tell you, anybody that comes up here and they prophesy, you can rest assured Pastor Nathan will take note of it and hear it, and I'm going to judge it. Now, it may be good, or it may be, hey, we need to, well, what's this? Okay, Moses didn't build the ark. No, he did, bro. What was you saying? Come on, let's get it right now, okay? Why? Because I care for the people. <laughs> I don't want somebody coming up here and just saying whatever and hurting people, okay? But I do want y'all to try. <laughs> Come on, take a step of faith. If you feel like you've got something from the Lord, take a step of faith, man. That's how you learn how to use the gifts God has for you. I mean, if, if I never got on a bike and actually rode the bike, would I ever get good at it? No, no, I wouldn't, okay? It's spending time on that bike. It gets you better and better. And it's the same thing with letting the Holy Spirit work through you. Ready or not, we are living in the last days of the church on earth. We need to be believing God for these gifts to be operating in our life. We need to desire them. We need to get hungry about them. I believe as we go out and reach those far from God, the Holy Spirit will manifest those beautiful gifts through us to reach the lost and hurting. The Holy Spirit wants us to be ready when He brings these gifts to us to help others and help ourselves. These gifts can bring people into a relationship with God. Let's be ready for the Holy Spirit to bring us a gift to open. Now, as we close, I told y'all last week I wanted you guys to, uh, you know, pray about coming to church today. And, and, and if you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, just between you and Jesus, I wanted you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And before I, I do pray for everybody, I said this about Brother, Brother Kenneth Hagin. He had multiple visions from the Lord like Paul did, okay? That means Jesus came into his room and talked to him about some things. But I wanted to read this little paragraph right here, and then, then, then we're going to pray. But this is Kenneth Hagin saying, Following our 1987 camp meeting, someone asked me, What did Jesus emphasize the most during his three-hour visitation with you? Without question, what Jesus emphasized the most is what we will be discussing in this chapter. Jesus said to me, my plan under the new covenant is for every believer to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Every believer. And again, I just want to tell you something, okay? You don't have to tarry for it. This gift is not for some and not for others. It is for the whole body of Christ. The whole body of Christ. It excludes no one. Oh, man, I wish I could speak in those tongues, man, but I just, I can't, man. I, I, just, I don't know what it is. No, what you're saying is, is you're just not having faith and you're not stepping out by faith to do it. You're letting your natural intellect determine your spiritual decision. That's good. <laughs> Second Timothy 1, 6, it says, this is Paul saying to Timothy, Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Now, there was a gift that he imparted to him by the laying on of hands, but he's also talking about the Holy Spirit that was imparted in him. You may say, what do you mean laying on of hands that you can receive the Holy Spirit? Well, in Acts chapter 19, 1 through 7, I'm just going to skip down to verse 6. It says, Then when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them. They spoke in other tongues and prophesied. 
There were about 12 men in all. So Paul would lay his hands on people, and then they would be filled with the Holy Spirit. And if you read that whole thing, it talks about them being saved first, receiving Jesus. And then, it's a separate experience, okay? And today, nobody in this room has to receive it, okay? Maybe you're still thinking about it, and you, you, you want you know, to get a little bit more understanding about it. But I promise you, if you'll just step out by faith, and you will let the Holy Spirit come up out of you and fill your mouth with the words to say, I promise you, and if you'll just step out and start speaking, you're going to find out it's not hard. It's not hard. It's just I was a young, dumb, crazy sinner that didn't know better than to just do what the preacher said. Hey, I'm going to pray for you, and the Holy Spirit's going to come up out of you, and you just open up your mouth and start speaking in tongues. I thought, okay, sounds good to me. I mean, I listened to the guy that told me that, hey, look, man, this joint's going to make you high. We're going to roll this joint up, we're going to smoke it, and it's going to make you feel good. Well, I'm going, all right, let's do it. Man, if you, if you drank this vodka and Mountain Dew, it's going to make you feel real good. Hey, let's do it. Come on. I'm with you. Let's go with it. So I was just that guy. Say, yes, sir. <laughs> Let's do this thing. <laughs> I wouldn't, you know, I mean, it, what's the difference? Have you ever seen somebody drunk? They speak in tongues. <laughs> Nobody says nothing about that. We're good with that. But you talk about something that's spiritual. Look, anything that God has, the devil tries to pervert. So his way of perverting it is just get you high enough and get you drunk enough to where you start speaking in tongues, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there. No, I speak of what I know. I've been so drunk I couldn't even carry on a conversation. So again, everybody, <clears throat> let's just bow our head and close our eyes. Hallelujah. And again, there's no pressure, guys. I mean, I'm not going to stand up here and work it for 30 minutes and you know and all that. I mean, I, I, I want, I want you to do what the Holy Spirit's telling you to do, because the Holy Spirit is a perfect gentleman. He just wants to be a part of your life, and he wants you. To have this prayer language. Because the Bible says that when you pray in an unknown tongue, you don't pray to men. You pray to God. This is your connection between you and God. It's a supernatural connection that gets you past your natural reasoning to God Almighty. And God would never give us anything that's harmful. You know, it says in, in Luke, it talks about how, you know, if we asked our natural father... For a piece of bread, would he give us a serpent? No. No, he would not do that. That would be crazy. And he goes on to say, Jesus says this, well, then you being evil know how to give good gifts to your kids. How much greater does your heavenly Father freely give the gift of the Holy Spirit to those that ask him? Jesus called the Holy Spirit the great gift. You know, you may be in this room today and you may say, you know what, Pastor? Receiving the Holy Spirit sounds good, but I've never received Jesus. That's the greatest gift you could ever receive on this planet is the gift of Jesus Christ being your Lord and Savior. If you're in this room and you have never received Jesus, or maybe at one time you did receive Jesus, but you've kind of walked away, you've kind of went backwards a little bit, then today I want you to make that decision to lean in and let Jesus be your Lord and Savior. If that's you, I just want you... As we're all, heads are bowed, nobody's looking around. I want you just to be bold and say, you know what? I need Jesus in my life. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ today. Or you want to come back to Jesus today. I want you to be bold enough to just raise your hand. We're not going to make fun. Nobody, hey, listen, we're all on the same team here, man. It's like me, the coach, and I'm, I'm trying to pick players for the team. And I'm going, hey, man, I, I want you to be on my team. And that's all I'm doing right now. If you don't know Jesus and you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, just say, hey, Pastor, pray for me. Put your hand up, put it down. I see that hand. Hallelujah. I want to meet Jesus or I want to come back home. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Think about it, guys. Your life is like a vapor. It's here today and gone tomorrow. That means when you leave this service, and I don't want to be one of those preachers that goes, oh, here he goes. He's going to talk about, man, if you leave, you know, you know. It's just a reality, man. People are leaving this planet every day. And we never know. I mean, we had a, you know, Joe's stepfather this past week in his bed. Gone. Just left his body. Out of here. And I promise you, if you'd have interviewed Bob a week prior to that, 
He wouldn't have said, yeah, man, I'm going to be leaving here next week. No. He probably, in his mind, thought that he had a lot more time on this earth. Went to a funeral yesterday. <laughs> Guys, I'm telling you, this is real. We're all going to leave here. And I just don't want you to leave here not knowing Jesus. I don't want you to leave here with a question mark. You know, there's a lot of people, like Dakota said, there's a lot of people that are saying they're Christians, but they're not necessarily living it. Well, that's just as bad as not knowing. So if you're here today and you say, man, Pastor, man, look, man, I want to get things right with God. Pray for me. Be bold. Raise your hands, man. Raise your hands and say, man, count me in on that. I'm tired of playing games. I'm tired of running around and just, you know, just wasting my life. I want to make a difference. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, the you that raised your hand, I, I would ask if you would, man, if you don't mind, just step out of your chair and come on up here and let me pray with you. Let's pray.